Hey guys, here at Sportsman's Guide with VP Mark Redetsky. What are we looking at? Yeah, like I was saying, we've got about 30 million bucks of inventory in here. Actually, hold on. Where's John at? Is that him? Hey, John, you can't take that. All right, folks, I'm at Sportsman's Guide and I am on the move. No time. Use my code war code. You can start saving money. Deals are a steal. Ah! All right, folks, we are at Governor's Gun Club. Look at this mammoth of a building. We're gonna make some videos, do some run and gun. Here is our overloaded cart. We immediately need another cart, but this is how we roll. Preloaded mags, bring all the things, and uh, you guys are coming too. because the camera dude's yelling threat in the middle of my story. I'm supposed to turn and engage targets and after I have my little micro fight, pick up the story where I left off. So it's real hard to get into a story and then all of a sudden be all about shooting because you can't plan anything. But it tests what's automatic, making it a really fun drill uh, for me. But anyway, super fun. If you want to check out the prior episodes, they've continually gotten more sophisticated as time goes on. Now the war stories aren't super awesome. I was in the thick of it, Al Qaeda everywhere, and all I had was my 1911. It's not that stuff. It's usually more humiliating stuff. So this one particularly, I've been peer pressured into telling you I'm not excited about it. It is crazy embarrassing. But without further ado, I'm going to get suited up, and you'll see how they go from here. I was in a place called Asadabad or Jalalabad, I forget. And this was back before in the early parts of the war, Afghanistan, but before all the Ford operating bases were built up like cities. So really, a bunch of rangers, we'd roll into a structure, take it over, start making some perimeter improvements and building up an area that it was defensible to run operations out of. Anyway, in the process of developing... <laughs> of developing all this stuff you have to go to the bathroom sometimes guys it's a fact of life so what we did is we developed we made this kind of just big box with three holes cut in it and we put this in the dead middle of <laughs> big box in the middle of the compound. This is where everyone was going to the, go to the bathroom, numero dos. So as you're going to the bathroom, there's no walls around you. It's just kind of like 360 degrees. Everyone at all the guard positions can see you and a bunch of people are sharing this. Now, in the Middle East where it's getting real hot, flies are landing inside, coming up and then landing on your face while you're doing your business. Pretty upsetting, pretty disconcerting stuff. I'd gotten up one morning early before everyone else was. And chain of command is a big deal in the military. This was maybe my second or third combat tour, so I hadn't really climbed up the ranks a whole bunch so that I was a little bit more comfortable with other non-commissioned officers, especially the top two in charge. the top two in charge. That's our first sergeant and sergeant major. They're guys that a young tab spec four, a buck sergeant, whatever I was at the time. Uh, you don't want to hang out with them. Let's move over here so I got a place to run to to cover. Anyway, so as I'm up early to do my morning business in this very vulnerable, awkward place, I, uh, I visit the throne 
and off to the side, right when I am getting going, I see our first sergeant coming up. And I'm kind of like, oh, you don't want to share a seat with this guy. And when you sit down on this particular box, it was so close. I don't know who thought it was a funny practical joke to have everyone sitting so sad, like you're sweating on each other, super awkward. And here comes this crusty first sergeant. And about the same time I look over the other side of the compound, and there sergeant and sergeant major closing in toward the box now in the middle is where it's going to be the most clean because people aren't usually favoring the middle but anyway i'm right there in the middle and here they're converging on me so this is going to be really really awkward there's no big payoff and punch for this story it's just something that really scarred me uh, early on and i sit down and I remember the first sergeant plopping down and he just smeared leg sweat on me. Sergeant Major about the same time he sits down and he's like this six foot five black dude. He was just super intimidating and he spoke like a really alpha male Barack Obama. So he's like, hey, how you doing there, bud? And that's how he talked to everyone. But he put his arm around me when he sits down and he just blows everything up. And, or that was the first sergeant. Anyway, puts his arm around me. He's like, hey, how you doing there, bud? You doing okay? And he's like looking in my eyes in this very awkward moment. And so even when you're going through the process of finishing... <laughs> through this process sorry I, I, I tried to pick up like I wasn't highly highly distracted but uh, pretty fun anyway it was just super awkward you guys should appreciate bathrooms with partitions God bless America <laughs> So uh, yeah, God bless America for bathrooms. They're really awesome. And if you're looking for a good vacation spot, I don't recommend the Middle East. Cool, anyway, that's War Stories with John. Super fun stuff. Train hard, train smart. Subscribe to this channel. I worked hard, I'm sweating for you here. I got all dressed up. Hit the notifications bell, and I'll see you next time.